I am Nancy Jeske, Campaign Coordinator for the United Way of Sheboygan County. New name, new campaign, 2012, here we are. And I have with me three guests. I have our campaign chairs, Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator, Todd Miller, Shank Exact, and Ann Wonder Jim, Project Manager with the United Way. That new name has been quite the feature for the beginning of this campaign. And I think it's got us all really in high gear to get this campaign rolling and going. You fellas did such a great job at the kickoff. Adam, what were those three words you told us at that campaign kickoff that just echoed to every wall? Thank goodness I remember. <laughs> we are family. Right. We are family. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful theme, and it's really, I think, what Todd and I have appreciated more than ever uh, having the honor of co-chairing the campaign this year because there's so many people involved with United Way and it's what makes it so successful. Todd, why do you think we chose that theme, We Are Family? We had it last year, but this year, for some reason, it really has new meaning. Well, it worked awfully well last year and we certainly expect it to work equally as well this year. When I look at the definition of family, I, I tend to define things in terms of numbers. And my, the way I look at We Are Family is We Are Family consists of 4,600 people volunteering over 170,000 hours last year towards a very successful campaign. There were, there were over 4,000, or I'm sorry, 9,000 donors last year that contributed towards the very successful campaign that we expect to repeat this year. And we do expect to repeat it. And with you guys out there leading the charge, I think we have a pretty good shot. But I want to get back to that new name. The other thing that made our family so complete was the fact that Sheboygan Falls United Way has joined us this year. And that gives us a complete east to west county to work with. A wonderful opportunity. They've been cooperative friends for as long as I've been with the United Way. And we've all been around for a long time. So we have a new territory, but again, it's like welcoming new members of a family. So that does have new meaning for us this year as well. But you have more than we are family going for you. You've got a campaign cabinet with 45 members. Would you like to tell us a little bit about the structure of that campaign cabinet and how you can depend on it to get you through? We're very fortunate to have a very solid and a complete cabinet. As you just stated, we have, in addition to myself and my wife Linda and Adam and his wife Chris as campaign chairman, we do have over 40 campaign cabinet volunteers that have committed significant amounts of time towards the successful campaign. And I believe behind them there are literally hundreds of other individuals that help support the campaign cabinet, all working together as a family to make this campaign successful. Again, volunteer is the word. Yeah. They're all busy people. They're all busy. Everyone on the campaign is a very busy person. And as you know, we tend to see a lot of the same good people step up year after year. And we can't thank them enough. But, but Todd hit it on the head. Our campaign cabinet is strong. They're experienced. We have some new people with fresh ideas. But overall, between the campaign members, the volunteers, the staff at United Way, you two included, we have such a strong team in place. And it's just a pleasure to be a part of. I mean, Todd and I didn't know each other that well at all prior to this opportunity, and we've gotten to get to know one another better, and obviously the people in, involved. And not only do you know you're, you're helping your community be successful, you're helping people, people out there with great needs, but along the way you meet so many wonderful people and you gain such a appreciation for those that are every day committing their lives to helping others be successful or, or get the helping hand they need to get back on track. So it, it's just wonderful to be a part of. Well, one thing that I do know is that two-thirds of your cabinet is returning. And many of them have been around on that cabinet for six or seven years. So I think they are enjoying what they're doing, and obviously the results show. And we do have a goal set this year, which I know you work very hard to um, agree upon and come about. Would you like to discuss that 
that goal? Sure. After much discussion and, and based on last year's very successful campaign of raising $2.4 million, we established this year's campaign goal to be $2.5 million. And together we are going to make that happen. That's, that's roughly a 2% increase over the prior campaign. But we believe that the spirit and the enthusiasm is out there to make that goal occur. I know that your spirit is in it. But you had to have spirit coming in in order to agree to the task of being co-chairs. What finally pushed you over that edge to say yes, that you would co-chair the campaign? Well, for me personally, it, it, it was kind of a gradual uh, decision in that I've had the pleasure of being on the board of directors for United Way now for four years or so, and I've been involved with the campaign campaign cabinet, I think for seven or eight years. I think, Nancy, you were the, the person who recruited me years ago. So uh, when I was asked to co-chair this with Todd, I was flattered by the request. I thought that it was an opportunity to, to step up and provide additional leadership, but more importantly, just to continue working with wonderful people. We have such a good team in place. So uh, for me, it was kind of a natural evolution to, to have this opportunity. And then also, the more time you spend with United Way, you gain a greater appreciation for the needs in this community. I mean, there's a lot of good people in this community with good jobs that may not be aware that at Safe Harbor, they served 3,922 people last year because of domestic abuse. They may not be aware that there's hundreds of runaway teenagers. They certainly aren't aware of the needs for mental illness or people in crisis. Uh, every now and then, someone may talk to someone or hear about something in the paper, but on, I think until you get more involved and meet with the agencies, the United Way affiliated agencies, or the good work, good people again, dedicating their lives to helping others, you just don't know. So um, I, it's, it's incredible to be part of this organization. If people aren't, if they haven't gotten involved, we certainly encourage them to do so. All they have to do is contact one of you at United Way or, or anyone on the cabinet and they'll get the information they need. But if you have been part of it before, you, you again, you develop this ongoing understanding of the needs in this community and how we can be part of helping people and making it an even better community. Todd, how about you? What pushed you over the edge? Well, I was equally as flattered to be asked because I know there's many capable candidates out there for this task. Probably what pushed me over the edge is the fact that myself and my wife Linda are both from Sheboygan County. We grew up in this area, spent most of our lives here. We raised our family here. Our three children grew up in Sheboygan County. Sheboygan County is a great place to live, work, play, and raise a family. And the United Way and its agencies really make the county to be a great place. The United Way agencies solve problems and address needs that most people in this community really don't even realize exist. They do that with love and compassion and without a great deal of gratitude, or, uh, or, uh, with lots of gratitude for those that are receiving the need, the services. And talking about those services, Ann Wondergem, our project manager, has really given us two marvelous projects to be working on. Ann, would you like to tell us a little bit about what you have put on the plate for Adam and Todd to feature? Well, thank you for talking about the plate. <laughs> <laughs> One of the uh, projects that I really have the privilege of working on is called the Food for Tomorrow Initiative, and I know, Adam, you're somewhat familiar with it being on the board, but a number of years ago, there was a belief that uh, Sheboygan County could benefit from um, uh, a study done on the food system and how it meets the needs of people who might be struggling to um, meet their food security needs. We don't call it hunger anymore, we call it food security. And uh, part of that was looking at how the pantries meet those needs, other feeding programs meet those needs. And in the broader context, we have a number of businesses in the community that produce food, cheese, sausage, um, that many times have food that they can donate. And how can we improve that donation system and storage system? So part of my role at United Way was to really conduct an assessment and looking at the users of the food system as well as people who might donate to that food system, including businesses, and put together a, a business plan um, for United Way. And that business plan was put together in 2010. And it really was based on building blocks. And many of you remember the pyramid that used to be the food pyramid. Now you have the food plate. So that's when Nancy talked about the plate. What was nice about that business plan is you could take one of those blocks 
and do something with it, but you could also form the entire pyramid. So we could look at when funding became available, mix and match, and really do some unique things. And the one event I want to mention that um, I think you're both familiar with was the animal meat sale at the county fair. Um, two years ago, through an employee at uh, one of our local businesses, somebody suggested that maybe people bidding on those animals would like to donate an animal to the food bank. And we, in our third year now, we received just one extra hog the other day. So we have five hogs, one um, cow, and two um, lambs that were donated and are um, being harvested and that meat will then be shared with uh, the pantries to give to the consumers of their services. So just some unique things have come out of that Food for Tomorrow plan. And one of the other neat things that we have uncovered is the need for our food pantries which are constantly empty. Mm -hmm. So that has been an ongoing part of our campaigns, the okay. food drives. Okay. And Anne, you, could you shed a little light on that this year? Absolutely. Um, as part of the campaign, and I know when you're out talking to your volunteers and also the businesses that you meet, and um, Nan also goes out to see, is we're encouraging those businesses to do food drives. Um, as part of their campaign. I brought a sheet of paper along, and I know not everybody will be able to see it, but we offer a resource um, to our um, businesses, and what we're really focusing on is healthier foods. Um, I don't know what you have for breakfast, but I know I've been trying to eat healthier. And when you think about uh, people going to a pantry and what people typically donate to a pantry, it might not always be something that's as healthy. So we developed this in terms of protein foods, grain foods, looking at healthier options. And then also when you donate, think about a family of four and donate maybe what would be a breakfast for a family of four. So it could be oatmeal with evaporated milk, some applesauce, 100% fruit juice in a plastic container really recommending no glass, that type of thing. Always look at the expiration dates. Um, a lot of times things that get donated are beyond their expiration date, which makes it very difficult to use. Um, this year the Rotary Clubs are, are coming across with an initiative, and I think you're a Rotarian, Adam. I'm not sure, Todd, if you are or not, but uh, Making Spirits Bright um, will be a light display show that they're looking at putting on and the entrance fee will be a donation of some um, canned goods or food products. So again, there's just a tons of number of ways that people can get involved. Um, one of the companies last year did the September apple drive and asked employees to bring in a bag of apples and those went to the pantries. Again, looking at how can we help people that use pantries um, have uh, options of healthier foods to eat um, because of the health problems we all face um, in terms of um, not only our, our calorie intake, um, but our food choices. And um, if you've never been to a pantry, I invite you to come out with me sometime and, and see what a tremendous job they do in trying to meet special health needs of the population. And our pantry users are children, um, elderly, uh, singles, and families. Um, and it just really supplements um, them in being able to meet their basic needs for rent, utilities, and other expenses. Now I know that the two of you are very aware of the food issues in the community, but I know that the two of you also set about going to visit agencies to see firsthand what our agencies are dealing with and what programs are dealing with, just so that you both could become more familiar with the true needs in this community. Would you like to share with us some of those observations that really really got to you? Sure. <clears throat> we spent two and a half days visiting various United Way agencies and seeing firsthand how hard they work for the benefit of their agency. We came away with a number of adjectives to describe our experience, I would call, <clears throat> so use some of those adjectives as sobering, enlightening, interesting, eye-opening, humbling, but one of the adjectives I'd use is prou proud or pride. It's amazing how hard the executive directors of these agencies work for their agencies to make them successful. Certainly we saw many, uh, many interesting things and learned many interesting, interesting facts about agencies. For example, Big Brothers Big Sisters has a simple program called the Lunch Buddies program that allows a person to spend as little as one hour a week with a lunch buddy, doing just that, having lunch with their, with their school-aged friend, talking and, and spending time with that person and getting to know them. And through testing afterwards, that agency has learned that 75% of those kids experience increased levels of self-confidence. I thought that was interesting. Very good. Adam, yeah. what struck you? 
Well, again, it was such an eye-opening, somber experience for both of us, and I thought the ad adjectives that Todd expressed were dead on. Um, a couple of them that really come to mind, Lutheran Social Services, there we, we talked about, you know, again, a lot of runaway situations, and having two teenage daughters, that was touching for me, because you just can only imagine how trying that must be on the family and those individuals, so, so glad that that support group is there. We went to the Salvation Army, and a beautiful addition there, what a, what a wonderful contribution by this community. Again, teamwork, collaboration to put that addition on. So we went through that beautiful addition together, but you walk into that room and see a whole family using one room for a month or more, and you quickly understand the difference between wants and needs. And thank goodness the Salvation Army is there. Um, we went to Bridgeway, met with uh, Kristen Blanchard, and. I was so touched by that visit in particular because she's someone who puts her heart and soul into helping others. It's a career choice for her. And she talked about you know, working with um, single mothers who are uh, striving to hang on to their children, you know, just tough times, perhaps just got out of a correctional facility, have no support group, no family, no real friends they can rely on that are gonna help them. In fact, their friends might help them go the other direction. So, if you're going to be part of the Bridgeway program, you sign an extensive contract with more uh, requirements than any of us would ever want to agree to. It's, it's very rigid, uh, a very uh, thoughtful process to help someone, again, get back on their feet. And, and she shared experiences from time to time of having to break up a, a domestic fight between a mother and a daughter. And being, Kristen, being a, a smaller individual, would, uh, I couldn't imagine being involved with breaking up a fight and going home with bruises or a bite mark on her. And as Todd and I discussed, even our worst days, never that bad. And then finally, Safe Harbor, as I mentioned earlier. When you learn and hear the statistic of 3,922 nights, nights and care for people who have suffered because of domestic violence, you can't help but be uh, touched by that and thankful for a place like Safe Harbor. So we're so fortunate in this community to have wonderful programs in place, a, an association like United Way that's helping provide the resources for these affiliate agencies to provide the support. And again, we are family. If we aren't all working together, if we aren't all doing what we can, providing the resources to help people like Kristen and others provide those much needed services, it doesn't get done. It just doesn't get done. So thankfully, as Todd mentioned, uh, we're proud to be part of a, a team that's had a great track record in the past and, and we're looking forward to having a real successful campaign this year as well. Well, you are men on a mission and I was with you at Salvation Army's visit that we made and I remember you asking what was to them the deepest need in this community. Do you remember what Major Hellstrom answered you? Mm. It's going to be a perfect segue to Ann Wonder Jim. Health care. Ah, uh, yes. 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 And Ann, that leads us to another initiative that you are deep into yes. on behalf of United Way. And uh, six years ago, United Way said, we have a need in the community and we want to assess that need. And uh, the need uh, was have for health care. And uh, based on that assessment, uh, $20,000 of seed money was given by United Way to Healthy Sheboygan County 2010. Um, and that was part of uh, the Sheboygan County Health and Human Services Department in terms of community planning. It took six years and six years of hard work and planning. Partnerships, I think we talked about teamwork, but partnerships is another good example. Um, coming on board with that initiative was Aurora Healthcare, St. Nicholas Hospital, most recently Prevea, the Acuity Foundation, just a number of community partners and organizations that said we need to do something to help people address their unmet healthcare needs. We have um, over 18,000 individuals in Sheboygan County as of July that are on medical assistance badger care. Almost 8,000 of those are children. Um, they have unmet needs for dental care. Um, up until January of this year, uh, we did not really have um, a place for those children to go to seek dental services other than Milwaukee or Green Bay. 
So after six years of planning in June, I was really happy to announce on behalf of the Lakeshore Community Health Center that they had received a federal grant of $650,000. So when you look at the $20,000 of seed money that United Way provided, some additional funding from Aurora Healthcare, St. Nicholas Hospital, the Acuity Foundation, tons of volunteer hours as you've talked about with their other organizations. I guess we can proudly say on behalf of Lakeshore Community Health Center, we will have an integrated medical home for families that have unmet health needs. Um, the health center, I know you both had, I believe, an opportunity yes. to visit the, the physical location, will provide primary and preventative health care. So immunizations, um, well child visits, um, basic um, annual physicals that some people have not been able to access, the dental care. Uh, we have been operating since January 1st and have seen 900 people keeping in mind that January through May was one day a week and it only went to four days a week beginning in June. So by the end of July, 900 people had their dental care met. Um, I have to share one quick story before I, I let you ask another question, Nancy. Um, Jack Waters, who is now the executive director of the Lakeshore Community Health Center, and I were talking the other day and he said, you know, I can look at an x-ray and I can't tell you what that x-ray is telling me, but the dentist was explaining in this x-ray what it meant and said, if we don't get this individual to an oral surgeon to have all his teeth extracted, he's going to die. It's that infected. Um, you know, when you think about that, um, we need to come up with a little bit of money to, to help that uh, payment for the oral surgeon. But that makes a big difference. Kristen, who you talked about at Sheboygan County Interfaith, had a mother who had all her teeth extracted. She's no longer on high blood pressure medication. She has her dentures. She's able to work. She's got a job. Um, so we'll be providing, the Lakeshore Community Health Center will be providing that primary health care, dental care, and down the road a little bit, mental health services. Um, we have a location, and I will say it on the air, it's 1931 um, North A Street. Um, two medical exam rooms, six dental operatories, and before we leave the program, I did write down the phone number so I can share it if people want to call for services. But again, um, teamwork, partnership, uh, working to address the needs identified in the community, um, supported by our other medical providers in the community. So just a, a new tremendous resource um, that are part of your campaign this year. Is it, is it safe to conclude that the 900 people that's received dental care the first half of the year wouldn't have received that care without that clinic? Correct. That's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. That's terrific. Yeah. And I would like to point out that this is not a free clinic. Mm -hmm. Payment is made on a sliding scale fee. Right. And that is taken into consideration as are emergencies. Mm -hmm. So it's um, patients since 2006. Yeah. This community through United Way mm -hmm. has been working and collaborating to wait for this great day that we can say, mm -hmm. here it is, and you guys have this to work with. Mm -hmm. And just saying what you, you know, following up on what you said with the sliding fee scale, I was there one morning and uh, a gentleman came in and he had his $5 payment and he was talking to the receptionist and he said, my wife needed emergency dental care and I'm making the final payment on our, our co-payment for that service. And the receptionist was thanking him. He says, no, you don't understand. My children need dental care. And I wouldn't feel comfortable asking for them to receive services until I paid my payment. Um, so definitely, people appreciate what's being provided and are willing to pay what they can uh, based on the resources they have available. So how do these programs that Ann has been working on figure into ways that you feel you can make the plea to the community for a successful campaign? Well, the examples you just shared, you know, when we both walk through that new clinic, when you think of your, your own family, your, your personal situation where you have a toothache, you can't get to the dentist quick enough because if you're in pain, I mean, it's difficult to work, it's difficult to interact with your family, it's difficult to have a nice evening with your spouse. I mean, life is not good until you do something about that. To think that there are people in this community that don't have any other resources or the means to get, a, to get that help, and so they're walking around with a toothache that ultimately becomes a full extraction in some cases. I mean, extreme, but in some cases. Right. But, to, but to imagine people walking around in this community for days, weeks, months 
not getting the dental care that they need or getting that painful situation resolved. Uh, Ann and some of the other folks we talked to previously talked about people who have never gone in for a checkup, ever, ever have gone in to have their, dent, uh, their teeth examined. And, and uh, uh, you know, can you imagine? I mean, in, our, in the average household, that just, you can't imagine that. So this clinic is wonderful. And, and the staff at United Way, Ann certainly had a strong leadership role, you all did, and at our Health and Human Services Department. But when you hear those stories, you again very quickly appreciate how fortunate we are to have people striving to accomplish these types of opportunities and help people in our community. We also had a program this summer called the Summer Lunch Program. Ended our summer on a very successful mm -hmm. note and something that we will get back to again next summer but is part of our Food for Tomorrow initiative. Right. So can't help but mention all the volunteers that made that possible. Mm -hmm. And that was a partnership again with the other initiative, our yes. Volunteer Center. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, when you look at the programs you talked about, Bridgeway working with Safe Harbor, um, Sheboygan County Interfaith, which works with Bridgeway, is involved in the summer lunch program. Um, it really is a family. Um, I, I sometimes spend more time, I think, lately with some of my uh, partner agencies, such as Kristen and, and other people, than I do with my spouse, um, just because it, I guess it's a passion, but it takes on a life of its own. Right, and it's not, it, we have a conservative community. I think that's fair to say. We're, we're a conservative county as a whole, but, but people have generous hearts, and, and history has shown folks step up here and help one another, and when you hear these types of stories or you're aware of these situations, Frankly, it's not difficult for me and I think the people involved with this campaign to ask people to do what they can to help. And so we certainly, that's, that's why we're in here today, not only to raise awareness about what's in play, but also the need for folks who are watching this program and living in this community to please do what you can to help and be part of this family and be part of this successful track record. People need you. And that is our message. And we thank you all for being with us. And anyone who wishes to donate to United Way, give our office a call, 920-458-3425, and help these guys help this community be a better place to live, work, play, and raise a family. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>